Steve, you're on your way again. Again, you mean yet? Well, what uncivilized neck of the woods are you sending me to this time? Paris. Paris? Hey, that I could use for a change. Forget it, Steve. It's no vacation. Three days from now, a meeting is going to be held there. What kind of a meeting? Our representative, Mr. Robertson, is going to confer with representatives from three small Eastern European countries. I see. We're trying to clear away some of the suspicion and distrust it has been standing in the way of international cooperation. Well, that sounds great. What am I supposed to do? Go over there and keep them away from each other's throats? <laughs> You're going over there as an escort for a man with the name of Zabo. Zabo? Who's he? Well, he's a courier for one of the Balkan countries. I'm to be his escort? It seems that uh, Zabo's government has been told that we intend to steal the confidential papers that he's bringing to his country's representatives. Oh, somebody's trying to rig a frame on us, huh? Exactly. Steve, if those papers don't show up at the meeting, the resulting suspicion could blow the whole thing sky high. It mustn't happen. Remember, distrust of us has been planted in their minds for years. Yeah. So I'll go over and take Zabo by the hand. And make sure that nothing happens to his briefcase. Our representative, uh, Robertson, will uh, meet you at the Paris airport. Get over there, Steve. Meet Zabo and try to find out who's trying to sabotage that meeting and smash them. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. <laughs> sure, I've got my assignment. Fly over to Paris and meet a Balkan courier named Zabo and make sure that both he and his briefcase get to a meeting okay. On the surface, it sounds like a cinch, and yet whoever told Zabo's government that we were out to steal the papers has some sort of a surprise party waiting for Zabo in Paris. I've got a nasty hunch I'm going to be invited. It's Wednesday afternoon when I arrive. Robertson hasn't shown up yet. Zabo is due to land in an hour, and I wait at the airport until he arrives. Zabo's plane is on time. He's been ordered to stay aboard until I come for him. I wait until the last of the passengers and crew have left, and then I go inside. Zabo? Yes. Uh, and you are... Uh... Steve Mitchell. Oh, good, good. Uh, I, I'm very glad to see you. Uh, this trip, it has been a strain. Excuse me, Zabo. Oh, uh, uh, Mitchell, this is uh, Shari Todescu. She is a friend of mine. They didn't tell me you two were traveling together. We met on the plane. I just came back aboard to tell you, Zabo. I'm going to stay over for a few days. So if you wish to get in touch with me, you know where to reach me. Very well. And now, if you'll excuse me, I will see you later. She said you met on the plane. Uh, yes. You know, for a fellow in your spot, I don't think it's very smart to strike up casual acquaintances. Oh, but it all seemed very harmless. You see, Shari is... Oh, excuse me, uh, uh, my small bag is behind this seat. Oh. Yeah. I'm Robertson, delegate to the meeting. What happened? Oh, amateur night in Dixie, and I played the lead. Zabo? I guess they got him. In the briefcase, too. I'm sorry I was late. If I'd been on time, this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Any idea who did it? Oh, there was a girl named Zari, or... What? Oh, it must have been Zari. Who's this Zari? Oh, some chick Zabo met on the trip. Looks like they left his little bag. Does this mean anything to you? Café Le Petit Chien. Can't even pronounce it. Why? Probably nothing. Much too obvious. Uh, well, what do we do now? Start looking for Zabo in the briefcase. No, but where? You just told me. Café Le Petit Chien. It's either there or nowhere. Come on. Robertson takes Zabo's bag and goes to his office. I don't want my only lead to get cold, so I pick a spot across the street from the café and wait. It's a typical boulevard spot. One movable musician, one flower lady, all the trimmings. Comes the middle of the afternoon, and I'm still waiting. I'm just about ready to cross it off as a bum steer when Zari walks in.
Well, monsieur, what will it be? A girl came in here just a minute ago, bartender. What happened to her? <laughs> a girl? But many girls come in here, monsieur. Would you perhaps like me to introduce you to one of them? I've already met this girl. Her name is Sari Tedescu. Where'd she go? Do you see her here? That's the point. Where is she? How do I know? Uh, I do not remember seeing a girl come in here a minute ago. Okay, guess I can wait. Monsieur? Hmm? Monsieur, I am Anton. Perhaps you'd like me to play a little tune just for you. No, thanks. But it would be a pleasure. Later, maybe. You do not understand me, sir. I specialize in playing tunes that people like to hear. Oh? What kind of a tune do you think I'd like to hear? I overheard you asking about a girl named Shari. What do you know about her? A man in my position has his ears and eyes open all the time. Cut the hocus pocus, let's have it. But, monsieur, I make a living playing tunes that people like to hear. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Ten dollars American? Ten dollars American. Does that buy me that tune? But of course. The girl Shari was in here. Oh, great. I already know that. Give me back my ten bucks. Wait. She came in. She spoke to the bartender. They went out through the back. She a friend of the bartender's? I do not know. I have not worked here long. Did you hear what she said? Yes, I... I can't talk anymore now. I can leave here for a short time at 10. Meet me 10 minutes after at Metro Station 12. Metro? The Metropolitan, the Underground Electric Railway. I will be waiting for you on the ramp. Okay, Anton. I'll see you later. Your tune better be good. Come in. Oh, Mitchell. Have any trouble finding my office? No. Any luck finding this sorry? A little. All bad. No luck at all on Zabo and his briefcase. I've been through these things a dozen times and I can't find a thing. We're in trouble, Mitchell. Real trouble. Yeah. You any idea what was so hot in that briefcase that Zabo was carrying? That's the mystifying part. I understand unofficially but reliably that there was nothing of importance in that briefcase. What? That's right. Just routine reports, I understand. Oh. Well, no matter what was in it, unless we find it and return it with the seal unbroken, our country gets the blame. Exactly. And we haven't much time. Yeah, the meeting's tomorrow night. That gives us... No. What do you mean? The meeting's tonight, at midnight. Since when? Since just before I came out the airport to meet you. You see, the other three representatives decided it'd be a good idea to change the time and place of the meeting. Well, that's just dandy. See, 9.30, that gives us two and a half hours. That's what I meant when I said we're in real trouble. Yeah. Well, I guess that means I better keep my date with Anton. He's the only lead I've got left. Anton? Oh, his character wants to play me my favorite tune on an accordion. I hope it's about Sari with the raven hair. See you. Right.
Monsieur, you are a very lucky man. You have just escaped two deaths. That third rail and... I get the picture. Who pushed me? Shari. Huh? I would have grabbed her, but it seemed to me that you needed me more. You're good. You saved my life. Thanks. Hey, why didn't that train stop here? The express. Oh. Now, what was you going to tell me about Shari? Well, when Shari came into the bar just before you, I heard her tell the bartender it was going to happen at 22 Rue Victor Mass and tonight. What was going to happen? I do not know. That's all I heard. Well, let's get over there. Uh, you paid me only for information. I'm a busy man. Now, look. I'm kind of short on time. You can find it quicker than I can. There's ten more bucks. You mean ten dollars American? Yeah, ten dollars American. Come on, let's go. But of course... Yeah. Got it. Well, that is much better. I do not like dark rooms. Monsieur. Double. Strangled. Oh, monsieur, I do not want to get mixed up in anything. Save it. Well, there's no telling where that briefcase is now. Briefcase? What briefcase? Oh, skip it. Look. Hmm. What do you know? Is this the briefcase you're looking for? Seal still unbroken. It must be very valuable. It is. See? Oh, operator, send the police to... 22 Rue Victor Mass. 22 Rue Victor Mass. Will you repeat that number again? Yes, sir. Yes, I have it. Yes? Yes, we have the briefcase here. And I'll deliver it personally to their representative at the conference. Yes? No doubt about it, sir. Mitchell and I have verified the seal is genuine and unbroken. Very well. Yes, sir, I will. The embassy wants me to extend their thanks. That unbroken seal still bothers me. Oh, forget it. Well, Sari or whoever took Zabo off that airplane knew about the briefcase. That's where you're wrong, Mitchell. According to the report of the Surete, all his money was missing. So the motive was robbery. Uh, quarter of 11. Hour and 15 minutes to spare. Still cutting it pretty thin. Mitchell, you've done us a tremendous service. The delivery of that briefcase will clear the atmosphere for the conference. Where is the conference being held, just in case? Oh, sorry, I'm afraid I can't tell even you that. The four of us delegates are the only ones who know. The other three think it's safer that way. Well, maybe they're right. That's sealed, though. Oh, forget it. Your job is finished. Not yet. Now I'm going to try and nail the killer of Zabo. Also the one who tried to push me under that train. Sorry, Tedescu. You know where she is? No, but I know a bartender who does. <laughs> well, thanks again. Well, monsieur? Can we talk for a minute? About what? I have a message from Sari Tedescu. I do not believe that, monsieur. This is important. <laughs> if Shari wanted to give me a message, she would phone me. Now, look, Buster, I don't want to get rough. You're wise, monsieur. My customers wouldn't permit you to harm me. Ah, uh, I see what you mean. Okay, you win. But when you phone Sari to tell her that I'm out looking for her, you ask her to tell you the penalty for concealing a murder suspect. This, of course, is not true. No? Anton? Yes? Tell your friend here what happened in the subway. It is very simple. The Charlotte Tedesco tried to kill Mr. Mitchell by pushing him onto the third rail at the metro. You lie! And when Mr. Mitchell finds her, I will be his witness and without payment. Come on, make it easy on yourself. Where is she? Room 525, Auberge Hotel.
The Auberge Hotel is in one of the better districts. The elevator whisks me up five floors to Sari's room. Who is it? I have a message from the bartender at La Petite Chen. You! Yeah, me. Get out of here! What are you kidding? What do you want? Just answers. Why did you kill Zabo and try to do likewise to me? Zabo is dead? You ought to know, sister. Poor Zabo. He was trying to help me. Yeah? And you hastened his earthly departure and took his money? No. He got me a forged passport and brought me to France. He told me the bartender was his friend and would try to help me. If you didn't want to be followed, why did you plant that match folder? I do not smoke. Why did you push me on the tracks? I thought you were going to have me deported. So I've been following you ever since you left the cafe. Brother, you'd murder a man to keep from going back? If you had been where I have been, you would not blame me. <laughs> this makes less sense by the minute. If you didn't kill Zabo, who did? It may have been the man who I saw into the plane as I was leaving. You know who he is? No. But I saw him once since then. Where? Le Petit Chien. The bartender? No, the accordion player. Anton. Yes. I dropped that match folder. Else how would you have known where to find me? You wanted me to find you? But of course, I needed your assistance. Oh, that's why you saved my life. I was not ready for you to die, Mitchell. But now it is different. <laughs> All right, brother, start talking. No! Open up or you'll need a new arm. When they open that briefcase, the meeting will be over. Oh, great. What is it all about? I'm the price chump of all time. Anton planted a bomb in Zabo's briefcase and led me to it. I delivered it to the meeting. You got a closet? Come on, Buster. Got a key? Sorry to have to leave you. Sorry, but that meeting convenes in 40 minutes. If I don't find out where it's being held before then, it'll be blown sky high. I will call the police. Yeah. Ask for Inspector Murat. He's a friend of mine. Tell him Steve Mitchell told you to. Go quickly, Mr. Mitchell. And do not worry about me. Yeah. Operator, please. Connect me with the Sûreté. Inspector Morat, please. The line is busy. I will wait. Inspector Morat, I'm calling for Mr. Steve Mitchell. He wants you to come here, room 525, Auberge Hotel, and take him on to jail. Yes, thank you. Nothing there will give us any kind of a lead. Didn't he say anything that might give you a clue on the location of the meeting? No. 25 of 12. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? Impression. Something written on the other sheet. He was writing on this when I was here before. L E. The clerk. 7 8 1 2 6. Phone number. Slim chance, but a chance. Look, while I'm dialing that number, use your influence. See if you can get the address of it, will you? All right. Give me the emergency operator. Hello, operator. I want the address of Le Kirk 7, 8126. Sane Storage Company. Get down! 
Guards, surround the place at once. Shoot to kill. What kind of hocus pocus was that? What would you do if you were outside and heard that? Same thing our boy probably did. Beat it. Get that address? Yeah, the same storage company. Five blocks due east. What's the quickest way to get there? The subway at the corner. If there's no train coming, don't bother about a taxi. It's, you can get there faster by walking. Look, you keep phoning that number till you get it. Then put in a quick call to the police. Too bad, Monsieur Mitchell. You almost succeeded. It is now eight minutes till midnight, and tomorrow's papers will carry the full story. I regret that you will not be here to read it. Which is which? Robertson! Robertson! Gentlemen, the Balkan representative is not here yet. We will wait. Although it's not yet midnight, I think we might as well proceed. There'll be no interruptions. The first order of business is the missing briefcase. I'm turning over to the Balkan representative. Do you find the seal official and intact? Then I would like you to open it and verify its contents. I think this will clear the air for our discussions. Looks like a guard. Could be it. One minute left. If I'm wrong now, it's too late. If he tries to stop me, I'll know I'm right. There's no time to argue, so I have to... I'm sorry, Mr. Stop. But you stand it ends up. Robertson! Robertson! Mitchell, what are you doing here? Mitchell, are you crazy? What's the meaning of this? Relax, gentlemen. I'll tell you all about it as soon as my heart's out of my throat. There's plenty of time now. Yeah, George, Anton did it. He broke the seal and put a flat bomb in the briefcase and then resealed it. Somebody in Zabo's country must have furnished him with a duplicate seal. I turned it over to the Surrey. Eh? They had their demolition experts take care of it. I've got it here now. And the meeting? Robertson said it came out fine. What about the girl? Oh, sorry. Oh, she's in the hospital, but she'll be all right. I'm not going to prefer charges, so I don't think she'll have any worries about staying in France. Good work, Steve. What now? Oh, I got plans. Plans in Paris? <laughs> I don't doubt it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to find a nice, quiet place and have a nervous breakdown. So long, George. <laughs> 